Hi everyone. Today I wanted to continue on with my uh, discussion of some of the early films of uh, Masaki Kobayashi. Uh, this is uh, The Fountain, 1955 movie. Um, it's the last of the four films that Kobayashi had to make for his studio, Shoshiko, to get back into their good graces making romantic melodramas. After this film, he goes into more personal projects, more cutting edge projects, going from romantic melodramas into very uh, specific critiques of Japanese uh, culture, Japanese life, uh, post-war, and, and of course in the human condition during World War II. And uh, this is a film that is uh, concerns water rights and that's you know <laughs> that's a common uh, narrative strand that runs through American westerns with the settlers and the farmers uh, also reminded me a lot of the Milagro Beanfield War a Robert Redford directed movie that I uh, I uh, talked about a couple months ago also uh, concerning a, a development company that's coming in to uh, um, to build uh, properties for rich people to vacation at, and in the meantime, they take all the water rights. They get the legal rights to water. So water is a, is a major factor, and, and, and nature in, in itself is a major factor in the fountain. And Kobayashi had grown up in, in northern Japan, and he was surrounded by mountains and skied and, and hiked, and uh, the main protagonist here is a botanist, and uh, so uh, Kobayashi is really good at, at, at integrating nature, whether it be uh, rain and snow, but also the uh, natural habitat of, uh, of the environment and how that reflects onto the dilemmas that his characters face. And although this is um, a love story, a love triangle, and I would agree with uh, the, uh, the um, verdict of Stephen Prince in his book, uh, that I'm going to quote from in a couple minutes, but that this is his probably his least uh, personal work, his least um, um, uh, uh, lesser movie uh, in in many regards, including the narrative. Although it was based on a popular novel and the screenplay was written, uh, I didn't write his name down, but it's uh, I'll mention him in future videos because he writes the screenplays for many. Uh, Kobayashi movies to come, including The Human Condition. But what I liked about the film was there was a couple aspects of it. One, I, a growing appreciation of, of Kobayashi's technique as Miss Sen. Um, there's some Rubura sequences. He's really developing uh, a, a personal style that I find um, very interesting. He does long tracking shots, long takes. Uh, the way he moves the camera around, again, as I mentioned, the way he frames much of the uh, drama of the, of the story in, in, the, uh, in the natural environment that surrounds his characters. But there's no, there's no getting around the fact that love in Kobayashi is, uh, usually involves torment. <laughs> and, uh, and there's... Uh, there, and, and the music score here is, is, is uh, I, I guess you would call it a dirge, and, and it's used often. I gotta admit, I, you know, I, I love romantic melodrama, so despite whatever, um, whatever uh, deficiencies there are in this movie, um, I, found it, I found it a fascinating film, and especially the ending. The ending involves the, a mountainside, a plant that they're stri the two characters, are, two of these characters are striving to, to reach because of some rare botanical uh, fern or some sort, uh, and it's just beautiful in, in the, um, in the sense of regret. It has almost a Douglas Sirkian sense of, uh, of regret if you've ever seen an ending to a Douglas Sirk movie, um, but I think the, um, the main reason why I, I, I found this film fascinating is in the performances, the lead actor played by Keiji Sada uh, in, in uh, Kobayashi's next film, uh, I Will Buy You, a baseball movie. He's just fantastic in that, in that movie. And he plays later on some Ozu movies and, 
very popular actor who, who uh, unfortunately died very tragically in his mid-30s in an automobile accident. But even more so, the lead actress, Eneko Arima, um, she, um, she would go on to play in a couple movies forward in, in probably Kobayashi's first uh, um, movie that could uh, reasonably called a masterpiece, and that's Black River, in which she is so tragic, a very bleak movie. Um, I saw it a couple nights ago, and uh, I, I, I had forgotten that I had actually seen this movie before, but it just absolutely overwhelmed me. And really, I, and a couple hours ago, I just finished re-watching uh, The Fountain, and it really brought my appreciation of Arima's uh, performance uh, in The Fountain. And I'll, I'll, I'll close with a, uh, a, um, uh, a quote from Stephen Prince's book, uh, his biography, because um, it describes her, she's a very, in this film, she plays a character called um, Makota, and, and she is in love with the, well, she, we don't know if she's in love, she seems to be in love, she claims she is with Keiji Sada, but she's a very complex character. And, and she's the main reason really why this film, uh, she really, ele her performance really elevates and they, even the conception of the character and, um, because it's, it, it's so complex and um, you don't find this in Japanese films, you, you probably won't find it as much in, in any film, it, it, it's that good. But I wanted to quote a confession, uh, a quote from Stephen Prince talking about the confession that uh, her character uh, makes to uh, the Keiji Sada character. She tells Aikashuma that she is searching for something that will bring her a sense of happiness about being born into this world. These aspects of her character resonate with the terms by which Kobayashi would define his later rebel figures and with the sense of a fallen world in which they find themselves. I think that, that the fallen world aspect of Kobayashi's vision, of course, very much influenced by his experiences in World War II, that the world is a fallen place. And even though here we, in the fountain, we don't get a uh, critique so much of, uh, of uh, Kobayashi's main interest, but we do get a critique of the capitalist interest of being uh, forced upon uh, the poorer segments of society, which certainly uh, lays into, and, and the, legal, uh, the legal power that they bring with that, which certainly does play into uh, Kobayashi's uh, anti-authoritarianism. And this, uh, I've showed this on my other videos, but A Dream of Resistance and uh, Kobayashi by Stephen Prince is just an outstanding book. Um, and going in my next video will be on the, the Thick Walled Room, which was actually Kobayashi's second film, shelled by his studio Shirshiko, and um, and released after The Fountain. Uh, as uh, uh, it, it, that is very much about World War II and the reaction to World War II, as far as the. Uh, Japanese, low-level Japanese soldiers were imprisoned for and convicted for atrocities that they committed during the war. Uh, so I'm going by release date, in other words. And then uh, after that, I believe I come to the human condition, nine hours. Uh, I can't wait to get to that. Okay, this is where I wrap this video up on uh, the films of Masika Kobayashi. Um, and uh, uh, I will have another video in a few days. I thank everybody who listened to me, and I uh, hope you guys take care, and I will catch you next time.